so let me close this one and uh, go to our lecture 9 okay so what we are going to do is we are going to how do we solve an od we have to create a function right that says dudt where u is our solution okay so we don't care about time and uh, we have u the output is d dt of u so how do you compute it we follow this formula right and in this formula we have an input array of u's and let's start with u0 u1 and all the way to un minus 1 right I kind of like zero based indexing if you like one based indexing maybe you start with u1 and end that un no no okay okay so all right so we want to get ddt of u0 and the u to all the way to un minus one and here we can see we can see we get a linear relationship, right? We have a linear set of equations. So we kind of want to form a matrix that after multiplied with u0, u1, all the way to n minus 1 gives us the derivatives. So the first thing we do is to make our life a little bit easier by putting the minus u outside uh, of this matrix. So that's this, the plus u move to the other side is going to give us a minus u right okay so now what we are left is we want to construct a matrix to represent this central difference scheme right I mean of course you can actually just uh, program it by going through a for loop but in a lot of cases it's usually easier to see the behavior of the discretize the ordinary differential equation if you actually have a matrix form of the differential equation so we have basically something like a single equation as to as opposed to a set of equations right why why would that be useful any thoughts yes you can find the eigenvalues of it right if you have a matrix you can find the eigenvalues of it why do you f want to find the eigenvalues how do you how do you, I mean, once you have the eigenvalues, uh, what do you do with stability? Yes, then you would know what solver to use because once you have the eigenvalues, you're going to know, okay, is the system stiff or not? Where is the eigenvalues? Should I use forward order, a midpoint rule, or some kind of Runge Carter or something, right? So that, that'll be good. So let's look at the matrix. Okay. Any suggestions on how to fill in the matrix? What's the first row like? Is it one with zeros up, trailing zeros? It is it one with a bunch of trailing zeros? Is it one to recover the uh, one. zero one? Yeah, the first the, the first line of the matrix corresponds to the green formula, yeah, right? It's it, it's d u d d d t of u zero would be equal to minus u times this guy, right? And what is this guy? This guy is uh, one over two delta x times u one plus minus one times two delta two delta x times this guy, right? Yeah, actually, that's a good idea. Can we? Everything is divided by two delta x. So can we just uh, put it outside? Okay, let's let's do that. So then, what's what's the matrix like? Zero. Yes, we get a zero one, a bunch of zeros, and uh, one at the end. Yeah, the end minus, minus one at the very end, right? Okay, good. Second row. Yeah, it's going to be the formula on the red. So yeah. you are right. We actually shifted, but like in a circular way, right? Mm -hmm. So we're going to be shifting the first line towards the right. 
So the zero becomes zero here, the one becomes one here, and the zero becomes zero here, and we get a zero at the end. The minus one wraps over and comes over to here. Okay, and then everything is going to be shifted. It's going to be minus one here, zero, one here, minus one, zero, one here, and goes all the way to the end. To the very end, look at the diagonal. The very end is going to be a zero, right? The one above the zero is going to be a one, and we get a minus one here. Uh, but the last one actually has another special one. Remember, this one gets shifted out of the domain. Where does it go? It goes to the first because the very last formula if i is equal to n minus 1 what happens we get a un here right and un is the same as u0 okay good so we get a matrix that looks pretty nice right okay so this is a this is a like a circular by diagonal matrix. So we get zeros on the diagonal, we get ones above and the minus ones below the diagonal plus these two entries that represents the periodicity of the boundary condition. So let's construct the matrix. So imagine n is equal to 100. Okay. And uh, uh, then the matrix i is going to be identity of n right so we get an identity we construct the identity matrix first and uh there is a function that shifts this is it uh, uh i think it's either circ shift or row yeah circ shift uh i by one let's see if i do that my answer is going to be okay so that's shifting I think, uh, do, 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 do. yeah, I get a one over here at the top, right? So, so that's shifting downward by one. So we actually want the ones to be shifting upward, right? So, uh, what we have is the matrix A is going to be circ shift of i by minus one minus circ shift of i by one. So that's my matrix A, right? So that's exactly what I wanted. And let me just uh, double check. We get a minus one over here at the top right, and uh, uh, we should get a one at the bottom left. Okay, very good. So let's do the same thing here, uh, same thing inside, inside the function. I'm just copying and paste it here. All right, except for the n has to be the length of my u, right? So whatever n I give it, uh, I, I'll do that. So in addition to that, I think we have divided by two delta x. So I want to compute my delta x, which is equal to one divided by n, and a is equal to a divided by two delta x. So that's the matrix that represents a discrete version of the spatial derivative, right? Okay, this matrix A is a operator, it's a matrix that is a discretization of DDX. Okay, so then what I'll do is my du dt just to equal to minus u times, okay, ddt is just minus u. Uh, let's solve it with u equal to 1. So minus u, so that's minus 1 times a times u. Okay, so the discrete operator a operated on u gives me uh, du dx and minus of that is du dt. Yes? The matrix a? Oh yeah, the large u represent the wave speed, the speed at which the wave goes. Um, so if we go back to our last lectures function, the convection diffusion equation, if we have the big U to be a negative number, we get something that goes towards the left, right? And whatever 
whatever u we have, that's the first the parameter that gives us the speed the waves are advancing. For every time unit, that's how far the wave has gone. Okay.